from the tough tracks to the remote tracks, from our campsites to the workshops. Come along and check out Great Off-Road Adventures. Your next episode is just seconds away. Good day everyone, it's Graham from Great Off-Road Adventures and welcome back to another video. Now this one here, it's been requested a few times but I've been somewhat reluctant to do it but I thought I might as well do it. So we're going to talk about all the camera gear that we use uh, to film for both ourselves for Great Off-Road but also for um, other bits and pieces like what we do when we help variety. So I've broken it, I'm going to break it into two parts. I'm going to do the photography gear first and explain a few bits and pieces and then I'll swap uh, and put the video gear out on the table and film that bit on one of the DSLRs. So I can't exactly film what I'm using the video camera um, at the same time. So anyway, that's that. So our photography gear, it's pretty basic. It's pretty simple. I think other than the drone, I've bought all this gear secondhand. Um, I've looked for deals, I've done my research, uh, I did a bit of photography in school, uh, and beyond that I've been self-taught. So what I started out with originally was this body here, which is a Nikon D5200. Uh, particular reason why I chose this is the 5000 range and above for the Nikons have an inbuilt intervalometer which means that it triggers the shutter every 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever I set it up for, which is how I do my time lapses. The lower spec 3000 series uh, Nikons, they don't have the intervalometer, so, but you can buy a plug-in attachment if you wish. Now, it is a crop sensor, so it's, it's not a full frame. So for the real photography geeks and gurus out there, you'll be going, oh, why is that? Well, it, it was, the best option I could get into at the time. Um, the camera is now under my ownership going on, I think five years old. So it's done really well. And I've just elected to stay with crop frames because that's what I've got the lenses for. So yeah, staying with the DSLRs. Um, more recently, we bought a new body. Now this is our primary DSLR body, what we use um, pretty much all the time. And it is a Nikon D7200. So it's more advanced, uh, has a better sensor, and a few more features than the D5200. But it's a Nikon, so it all operates in the same way. All the menus look familiar, which is obviously really helpful when you're out there working and you, know, you want to be familiar with your equipment. You want it to sort of feel the same, look the same. Now, a couple of features with the bigger body and why it's sort of our primary DSLR. has two memory card slots. So when we're taking photos for clients like Variety and that sort of thing, we can duplicate and back up by storing onto both memory cards. The other good thing with having two DSLRs, and this is the way I've got them configured, is I have one lens on one DSLR and then my second lens that I predominantly use most time on the second body. So I'm not having to fumble around swapping lenses, that sort of thing. And likewise, if I'm doing a time lapse or something with this body, I can take photos, that sort of thing with the other one. It is a little bit excessive, perhaps getting a little bit excessive, but um, it works really well for us. And because there are those times when we do need to use two cameras, um, it's, it's a good thing. Plus it's a redundancy and a backup that if we were to drop this and break this, it's not all over Red Rover. We can go and just continue using the single, the older DSLR. So with both those cameras, I've also got um, three batteries for the older camera because of the time lapsing and two batteries for the newer camera. Uh, so it's always one on charge in the car and we just cycle through. Um, talking about lenses, Obviously, if we talk about the primary lens that we use on the D7200, it is an 18 to 300 um, f 3.5 to 5.6. So it's a standard Nikon DX lens, but because it's 18 to 300, we don't have to muck around. We've got nice optics at the 18 uh, millimeter level, but we can also reach out and zoom in with it. So it works quite well. For those that like my time lapses and the astrophotography at night, uh, this is the lens that I use, and it is an 11 to 20 mil fixed f2.8 uh, lens from Tokina. Uh, and yeah, 
Nikon don't do a super wide angle lens down to 11 mil with f2.8. They do do one, but it's like a 3.5 to 4 aperture. And so, you know, with the aperture, we want to get nice low aperture um, for a, ni or a nice wide aperture, I should say, which is a nice low number in a simple sense for the nighttime photos. We obviously have two additional lenses on the table. This is our backup 18 to 135 um, at the same aperture range as the bigger lens. And then we have a fixed 35 mil lens, which we predominantly use um, for like client shots and that sort of thing. So it's, we, we don't really use that lens when we're out filming um, our trips and that sort of thing. We do have a flash. We do use that periodically out here, but again, predominantly that's used um, for our client shoots. And it's all Nikon branded besides that one wide angle lens. Obviously trusty tripod, can't really do time lapses and stuff without a tripod. And of course, last but not least is the drone. I've gone through a few different drones but the one that I have right now is a Mavic 2 Pro. And I have the Fly More kit with that. So it comes with some additional batteries and bits and pieces. So yeah, I've got three batteries overall with that drone. And that allows me just to constantly rotate through them. And as soon as I finish flying the drone, whether the battery's half charged or fully empty, I just take it off, put it on charge, and I always start a new flight with a fully charged battery. So yeah, like I said, it's basic, but it works for us. We have our reasons for why we have that additional bits and pieces. So yeah, that's a look at what we use just for photography. Now I'll clean all this off the table, get all the video stuff on here, and we'll run through again what we use for the videos. All right, so swapped over all the gear, now filming you on the DSLR, so the picture all looks slightly different. And I've got all the video gear laid out on the table. Again, perhaps not as much as you think, but for some people it's probably also more than you think. So I'll break it down and I'll go through what we use. So obviously, trusty drone is used both for photos and videos, hence why it's on the table both times. Spoke about it before, Mavic 2 Pro, three batteries, has the really good camera on it, the Hasselblad, and that's particularly why I got it, because it is a really, really good camera in such a small footprint. Uh, other reason I got the Mavic 2 instead of going for uh, the Phantom 4 Pro, which yeah, has sort of has similar flight time, speed, and a very much the same camera, just the portability with the Mavic, when it folds up, it's so small, compact, easy to travel with. I can, I can carry it, hike with it, that sort of thing. Whereas with the Phantom series of drones, you'd have to have your whole big backpack. Um, now, moving from right to left, or left to right for you guys, we now have um, two GoPros. We have had two GoPros for a while and obviously various mounts and attachments. Uh, so this is one of my OG original Hero 5 Blacks. Still kicking. Um, but this is the consumable one. This is the one that gets placed in all the danger because it owes me nothing if it does break. Uh, so it's on the camper trailer, it's on the outside of the car, all of that. Um, and yeah, it kicks along quite happily. Uh, I've got it set up with a few different mounts. Uh, this one here is just a standard GoPro housing, but it's on the three-footed monster magnetic mount. Um, and this is a really, really good option. Um, you know, to replace the old suction cup. We do have the suction cup as well, but um, predominantly we use the three-footed monster mount. Of course, various GoPro bits and pieces and attachments, bases, spines, that sort of thing. We then have our sort of vlogging camera. Uh, so this one here is a GoPro 7 Black. It's mounted on the GoPro handle. It's using some case that I found on Amazon that also houses the GoPro microphone adapter in the bottom. And the microphone on top here is a Rode Video Micro, obviously with the fluffy dead cat to keep the wind out of it and that sort of thing. So, so yeah, so this is the one that, you know, sort of our, all our selfies are filmed on, but we'll also use it for hiking and that sort of thing because it's just compact, small, lightweight, and easy to use. And of course that gets us onto our last video camera. And again, I did specifically leave this one for last. Um, this is our Sony, this is our main video camera. This is what I was videoing you on before. 
and it's the one that we get all the nice artistic video shots with. So um, this is the one that we can pull our focus with and all that. Now it's packed full of features, um, and specifically why I got it. It has manual, full manual control. So the photography nerds out there that know what your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed do, and how that adjusts your um, exposure. Oh, I've still got full manual exposure control in a video camera. Also, it has built-in ND filters. Now, you'll notice I didn't have any ND filters or anything like that for the camera gear. Um, I just found them a bit cumbersome and annoying. I did have them, never really used them much, um, but for niche things, they are useful things to have. Having it built into the video camera is a really, really useful. Uh, there's three stages of ND um, and just works really well. Again, like our video, like our DSLR that I'm now using to film with, the Sony video camera has two memory card slots in it, so we can obviously duplicate and have redundancy and all that. Also has some really cool um, like sports modes and super slow-mo modes and all that as well. So yeah, we can get some really cool shots with the Sony, and like I said, it is our main video camera. On top of that, we have a Rode VideoMic Pro, uh, and obviously that's the one that lives on that camera. I, I don't take it off, just stays on there. And of course, last but not least, you can't really shoot video and interviews and all that sort of thing without having a tripod. So this is the Benro tripod, and it only is for that camera. So we've got a specific tripod for the DSLRs and a specific tripod for the videos. So we do carry two tripods with us uh, when we go out and about. And of course, last but not least, is the lapel microphone that I'm using now to talk to, to you. So again, I used that before, used it now. Obviously it's a video item, but I need to be able to talk to you, so yeah, anyway. And then of course, you know, with the video stuff, there's all other accessories that come with that. So like I said, lapel mics, our other mics, lights, um, yeah, it all comes with us. We do have fairly compact gear for that exact reason. We can pack a lot of it into a little black pelican case like that. So our spare camera lenses, our spare memory cards, which live in here, our light, our microphones, all of that go in that black box. And then it's just the video, the main video gear in backpacks. So we have two camera backpacks and one black box and two tripods. And that's all our photography and videography gear. So yeah, uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a heap of questions about bits and pieces. So feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below as well. Um, I could have gone into a lot more detail um, about you know what specific shots we get and how we use the cameras and all that, but I think it was going to blow this video out, make it a lot longer than it's um, a lot longer than I could probably cram it all into. So yeah. Anyway, we're slowly losing light. We need time to light the fire. So enough talk about video cameras. Happy, safe adventuring. Stay safe on the tracks and trails. I want to get back to camping. And don't forget, if you're enjoying the content, if you haven't checked out our trip videos, go and do that. And don't forget, you can like, subscribe, and if you are new to the channel, make sure you tick the bell and enable notifications. Anyway, flies are annoying me. I've had enough. See ya.